You're the daughter of Katy Perry. You're the daughter of Katy Perry. This is Katy Perry's dad. Watch what happens when this woman confronts him about his daughter's music. You're trespassing. She is a, right, and you clean. claim to have a ministry? No, sir. Hey, I minister all over. Then minister to your daughter because that is needed more than ever. You ought to know better. Did you see her latest you video? You got kids? kids? I do, and I have no relationship with my son because... He is walking away from the Lord and okay, he so exploits it. Or you point your finger at me, once you point your finger at You me. allow Katy Perry no, to allow play on the highway I don't, I don't and she is Katy taking Perry. you to hell right along with her, including know. millions of young you women. I have nothing to do with that. You think you're acting like a Christian right now? Shame on you. You're not a parent. You'll be held accountable for what you have done and allowed her to do. Till you can judge others you should judge yourself the fruit of uh, your tree is pretty rotten oh, really? along along with your daughters because god is angry with the wicked every day and your daughter is wicked what was your childhood like well we're in a church so it very much feels like home right now i went to church on sunday morning sunday evening and wednesday night katie perry grew up in a christian home her parents keith hudson and mary hudson taught her the bible from a young age and they themselves were evangelists who traveled around the country preaching the gospel katie herself professed to be a christian and she used her singing gifts to glorify god as a worship leader you don't have to just do all this stuff so god can come to you he'll He'll meet you where you're at. And at 16 years old, she produced her very first Christian album, all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Only reason not to live is Christ come down and die for you and me. But at age 17, perhaps because her Christian album had not been as successful as she'd hoped, Katy Perry decided to ditch Christian music. She then caught a plane to Los Angeles, and there she started her career in the secular world of entertainment. It wasn't long until Katy Perry publicly denounced her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My upbringing wasn't, I mean, for everyone else, it gets, I guess it felt like rebellion, but really it was just me creating an alternate reality because I didn't care for the reality that I grew up in that was very sheltered. And like I said, I, I guess I just had had to choose either have parents or just agree to disagree on some some really annoying belief systems. Just when it seemed like things could not get any worse, Katy Perry publicly mocked Christianity at an awards ceremony in front of thousands of people. And hell, a place of gnashing of teeth, continuous burning of skin, and probably Mike Pence's ultimate guest list for a barbecue. But is all hope lost? Has Katy Perry forever turned her back on God? Well, even to this day, Katy Perry struggles to use God's name as a curse word. I mean, I don't casually say certain swear words, you know? I can use the F word a lot, but I don't use other words that, uh, you know, can be a little bit more religious based or whatever. Notice how a few seconds later she says the words, oh my gosh, rather than oh my G-O-D. In other words, she's a little bit afraid to blaspheme the name of God. And discernment, oh my gosh, it's so important to have like discernment in this industry. And perhaps the most telling sign of all is in this interview with Siri Singh, where Katy Perry bursts into tears saying that she longs for the days of Katherine Hudson. Who was Katherine Hudson? Well, that was Katy Perry's original name when she used to be that girl who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I so badly want to be Katherine Hudson that I don't even want to look like Katy Perry anymore sometimes. Okay. And like, that is a little bit of why I cut my hair is because I really want to be my authentic self. Yes. Like, a hundred percent. I uh, wrote a song about it. Okay. That's what I guess I do. That's how I process, uh, is I, I write understand. songs. Which song was that? What lyric comes to your mind? By the grace of God. Here's the answer you've all been waiting for. Will Katy Perry return to God? Well, let's listen to what she has to say when she refers to her Jesus tattoo on her wrist. I do believe in faith, but I believe that faith is pure. And that, she says, is the reason for that tattoo. A constant reminder that no matter where Katy Perry goes,
Katie Hudson is never far behind. And I knew I wanted this on me because no matter how much changes around me or how much I change, there's not really an eraser for this. And every time you play the guitar? It stares right back at me. It's like, remember, you came from this and you can always go back to it. <laughs> Honestly, I can't get that one sentence out of my mind. Remember, you came from this and you can always go back to it. Yes, in one sense, that is so true. You can always turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. But at the same time, that is a very dangerous way to think. Let me show you why. When you're young, this is what the voice of God sounds like. It's strong, it's loud. Come to me, turn from your sins. Jesus Christ is Lord. You can hear it so loud. But then life happens, and suddenly, the more you ignore the voice of God, this is what happens. Until that voice becomes so faint that you cannot hear it anymore. My dear friend, can I ask you a question? Do you have spiritual hearing loss. Can you still hear the voice of God? Or have you got so deeply entrenched in sin? Have you wandered so far from God that it's just a faint whisper? That loud voice that you heard when you were a child, that loud voice that you heard from the preaching of the gospel at the church you went to, that loud voice that you read in the scriptures, now it seems so quiet because sin has dulled your heart and has dragged you away from the sweetness in Christ that you once knew. Oh my dear friend, whoever you are, I am pleading with you today, come to the Lord Jesus Christ because I'll tell you one thing the name the Lord Jesus Christ if that's written if you've got a tattoo on your wrist that will not grant you entry into heaven no it is only the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ only Christ's blood shed for sinners that is the only way to get into heaven that is your only ticket to get there because when that blood was shed forgiveness of sins was possible without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sins and on the cross Christ Jesus shed his blood so that you could be forgiven. So all your wanderings, all your sin, all your blasphemy, all the waywardness in you, all of that can be cleansed and gone forevermore because Christ on the cross paid the price for sinners. God poured out all of his wrath, all of his judgment on Jesus for my sin and for your sin also. And then Christ, he was put in a tomb and on the third day he rose from the dead. And let me tell you something very very, very powerful. Because he beat the grave, he now has a power to save any sinner, to beat their grave also. And the Bible says this, it's so beautiful, the scripture says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, your walls are ever before me. So, Katy Perry might have the name of the Lord Jesus Christ written on her wrist, but the Lord Jesus Christ has the names of all of his children written on his hands. And I want to see Katy Perry's name written there. I want to see the name Catherine Hudson written on Jesus' hands and I want to see your name written there too because you're just as important. So today if you know that you are a prodigal son, you're like that son who said to his father give me all of the inheritance, I want my money, my wealth now and I want to go out and enjoy my life. If you know you've been living, wasteful living, you've been living in sin and all the pleasures of this world, you've ran away, but then you found yourself with the pigs, eating the pig food, and you taste that pig food, and it tastes so bitter, so vile, and you realize that the pleasures of this life are temporary, they're meaningless, they do not satisfy, and you've decided, like that prodigal son, I'm going to go back to my father's house. I'll humble myself. Maybe I can just be a servant in his house. And there you see the father with his arms wide open and he runs to welcome you. He wraps his arms around you and he says, I'm not angry at you. I love you. Come back to me, O prodigal son. Come back to me, O prodigal daughter, because there's a great banquet prepared. That banquet of heaven is there. We've got the fatted calf and it's ready. Have the greatest robe put on you. Take my ring and wear it yourself. All of this is for you because I love you. Though you wandered, though you ran away, is all I have for you is grace 
and mercy. If today you can see the Father with his arms wide open. If today you can see the Lord Jesus Christ saying, come to me, become one of my followers. I plead with you, you come right now because I cannot guarantee to you that tomorrow you'll still be able to hear the voice of the Most High God. Let's all just take one moment to say a prayer for the prodigal children we know, the sons, the daughters, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers and sisters who have ran away from God when they know they should be with him and living for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to see a celebrity who's also wandering from God, please click this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. We want to be your friend and we want to see you again.